Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Dr. Tina Cooper-Smith on the line, and she's a doctor and coach at West Coast Women's Reproductive Center. Dr. Tina, welcome to the show. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to have you on the show. And I was, as I was preparing this morning, I'm like, how am I going to keep up with Dr. Tina's energy? I mean, we've met multiple times and I'm like, you're just fiery and excited and passionate about your work and what you do. And I'm excited to get into that. Um, so we'll be talking about, of course, the West Coast Women's Reproductive Center today. We'll also be talking about the erotic blueprints and really how those blueprints can factor into helping the overall healthcare system. So more to come on that one. But before we get going on that, um, we'll start this with our Mission Matters Minute. So Dr. Tina, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, experts, and executives. So that's our mission here. Dr. Tina, what mission matters to you? I'm all about healthcare, wellness, and living a full life, a life full of vitality and pleasure. Pleasure and wellness, it's our birthright. We're on this freaking planet to have fun. Work is just to distract us. We're here to have fun and be healthy and well. And that's my mission. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, love bringing a mission-based uh, individuals on the line to share why they do what they do. And it's obvious your passion for, for what your work. Let's start off with your work. So tell us a little bit more about your background and really kind of how you got on this path. God, I'm still trying to figure that out, the path, <laughs> right? The path. But basically, I'm a doctor, right? I was bathed, weaned on Western medicine. My dad was a surgeon, so he ran his household like he ran the operating room, right? Wow. We talked about surgery at the dinner table, appendectomies, colectomies, hemorrhoidectomies, <laughs> like that was dinner table <laughs> conversation. My friends would freak out at the house, right? So I was bathed in that. My mom was a teacher, so I got a lot of that teacher education part of me as well. And, but I was a little disruptor rebel even from the beginning. And I realized as I was putting this together that I like at the age of five or six actually sat at the dinner table and said, hey, can the seed fall out? I was already trying to figure out sex. Yeah. And they were like, what seed? I'm like, you know, the guy, the girl, the seed. How does it, how does, can it just fall? Like, I was already in my own world of trying to connect all the dots of life. Yeah. I was Jewish, smart. So like I had to be a doctor. That was like, I had two choices, doctor <laughs> or lawyer, right? So I became a doctor, but somewhere there was pieces of me that knew there was more out there to healthcare. I wanted mm. to do a, um, I tried to do a fellowship on acupuncture. It was a Henry Luce of um, Newsweek or Time magazine, but I didn't mm. get it. So I was like, oh, well, I got to go to med school. Yeah. So I did med school. I went to Duke undergrad, Duke medical school, came out to do OBGYN at, um, at LA County, which is the busiest hospital doing deliveries. Again, I wanted to be a surgeon like my dad, but I didn't want to be a surgeon like my dad. So I became an OBGYN, right? It was like, you know, how do you do whatever? So, but OBGYN, so I'm doing fertility work and mm -hmm. It's all about mind, body, spirit, making babies. Yeah. Why weren't people, why did it work for some, didn't work for others? Why were some people, it was easy. Some people, it was hard. And I just, I'm the perpetual student. Yeah. So double boarded OBGYN, reproductive endocrine. Then I did integrative medicine and then functional medicine. And then some courses, meditation, energy healing, yeah. Mama Gina, women's empowerment. And finally, Jaya, she led me to Jaya and the mm. erotic blueprints. So that's kind of how I got where I got. Wow, what an amazing story. And I'm just picturing like being at that dinner table as a kid and being like, what are we talking about right now? And so when I see it, and when I also like kind of connect the dots in our conversations, it all makes sense. I'm like, you're um, uh, definitely obviously a lot of energy, a lot of passion for your work, but also have the basis and, and, uh, and you know, in medicine and other things of so Western medicine and otherwise, right? And you've made a lifetime of really um, discovering and exploring the field. So I love it. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about um, West Coast Women's Reproductive Center. So tell us a little bit more about your practice. Yeah. So, you know, basically I went out into practice 25 years ago or so and hung out my shingle, gynecologist, fertility doc, was doing both, 
um, somehow most of the fertility people who went out in the world became just fertility specialists and they yeah. over time it's become like an IVF factory everybody does in vitro and I guess I was really a woman health physician and I never could give up the let's just take care of women yeah. and um, I always felt the the need to be more integrative and mm -hmm. I was asking for help with acupuncturists or psychologists yeah way before it became sort of fashionable. I was talking about hormones and I was, yeah. my practice is all about getting you over the fertility experience, right? It's like yeah. together we'll find a way because some people go through the fertility experience and never stop becoming fertility patients. They were so traumatized mm. and stressed. Even if they have a kid, wow. they're still living the trauma of the experience. Other people go through, never have a kid and they're over the experience, right? Yeah. So I have this thing in my office. I don't even remember where I got it. You know, build a bridge, build a bridge, <laughs> cry, get over it or something like that. It's the key is like, life is difficult. Life is a path. Life is a journey. And I love taking care of women and their partners and just helping them understand why did they get where they, they are? I help them look at their trauma, their difficulty in life and have it look at like, why is this for me? Why is this happening for me, not to me? Yeah. Because then you can sit in the muck. And I had some muck this morning. I'm like, oh my God, I got to go on this podcast. <laughs> and I did some deep inner work and I'm like, oh no, I'm falling apart. Yeah. And I got on a call with some friends and was like, <laughs> get me back to my energy because I was feeling a little sad and lonely this morning and like, mm -hmm. oh my God, I'm going to talk to the world and I'm feeling sad and lonely. So my job is to heal people mm -hmm. and to help them get back to vitality Yeah. in any way, shape or form using all different methods of healing. Mm -hmm. Western medicine is not the only way. That was how I was traditionally trained. Mm -hmm. So I stand by it and it works great, but it's not the only way to heal. So this is, and, and even from our prior conversations, when you kind of um, let me know, because of course it's not my background, like how fertility's normally been, it has become for many, I won't say for all, but for many, like an IV, IVF factory, as you mentioned, and for people to know that there's even like an alternative like that there are doctors out there that are practicing uh, something a little bit different and not using that as the, you know, one size fits all cure. Um, I just think that that was pretty special. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's, you know, we'll talk again about the blueprints, but it's, it made me realize like that was my eye opening of like, Oh, yeah. that's why we need more healings because yeah. everybody has a different way in to heal. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, I think that's a great transition. So speaking of the of the blueprints, so let's just dive right into that topic. So the erotic blueprints, maybe start off by telling us a little bit more about what they are. Yeah, so Jaya invented this, or I don't even think she invented it. I think she mm -hmm. discovered it because I think mm -hmm. it, it just exists. We have four bodies and we all go through life with an mm -hmm. energy body, a mind body, a physical body and a heart emotional body. And she put it together. So core erotic blueprints are number one, your stage of sexuality. Yeah. So are you healing, resting, curious, adventuresome or transformational? Mm -hmm. And you can be all of those in one day or it could take you a whole lifetime to get through all the stages. Mm -hmm. There are obstacles to health, right? Biochemical, physical, emotional, energetic, right? Yeah. So there are obstacles to sexuality as well, right? Mm -hmm. What is sexuality? We define it way more broadly than mm -hmm. the Western movies, right? Yeah. It's not all, you know, guy, girl, naked bodies. It's mm -hmm. pleasure. And so the, the core erotic blueprint types are about how does your personal body access pleasure? How does your nervous system get turned on into pleasure? How do you plug in? Are you an Android or a Samsung, right? <laughs> are, you, are you an analog or a digital, right? Like how do you light up? What makes mm -hmm. you light up? And so eroticism and pleasure is way, it's so much bigger mm -hmm. than the story that we learn about sex. And none of us have primary education in sex in America. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, it's in all the movies, but we really can't talk or teach it. Right? Yeah. Here's a book about the birds and the bees. And, you know, and I'm your five-year-old going, hey, I don't get it. Right. 
And so we have these five archetype core erotic blueprint types. Yeah. So we have the energetic. Mm -hmm. That energetic loves anticipation, mm -hmm. longing, teasing, eye gazing, going really, mm -hmm. really, really slowly. You turned on yet? Always. <laughs> so, so good. They have this incredible energy and mm -hmm. they are very, very, very sensitive individuals. Mm -hmm. And if you certainly sexually, if mm -hmm. you hit their genitals before the eye gazing and the slowness and the tease <laughs> and the buildup, they're going to short circuit, turn off. They're going to like blow up. Like you didn't plug them in, you unplug them. Mm -hmm. They are very, um, very slow. Mm -hmm. You got to warm them up. You got to kindle the fire. You mm -hmm. got to. So that's the energetic, and they're really, really sensitive individuals. And that's that's the energetic. They can have orgasms without even touching their bodies. Wow. The energy <laughs> le We have an energy body that surrounds our body. Imagine when you stand next to a human being, mm -hmm. my in your face, you're a little too close. <laughs> I just crossed your boundaries. We stand away from human beings. Yeah. Because you actually have an energy space around you. Mm -hmm. And you only let people cross closer if you let them in, right? right. Mm -hmm. So energetics have this, they're they're in tune with their energy body. Mm. And you can actually turn them on up to orgasm literally by like playing with their energy body and mm -hmm. not touching them, but they short circuit really easily. So that's the energy energetic. Okay. The sensual loves all things related to the senses, eyes, ears, mm. nose, mouth, touch. Mm. Oh, please pet me, pet <laughs> me good. Give me a massage. Mm -hmm. Give me roses, give me yeah. good food. Every Somalia who's into mm -hmm. the wine, they have their sensual body is for sure. Fire. Mm -hmm. Every foodie, you listen to them describing a new restaurant, they're having an <laughs> orgasm at that dinner table, right? I want what they're having. And yes. They are on fire. They get mm -hmm. pleasure from a sunset, a sunrise, their visual, the arts. Yeah. You know, there's so much that lights them up. But they also get turned off like, oh, my God, the sheet is not satin. Forget it. I'm out of here. I'm leaving. There's a sock on the floor. You're messy. Ew. Sex is like, it's got to be clean. So they need things the right way. They, too, could actually, like, literally be so on fire just from a beautiful dinner or yeah. wine, right? So the central body... Um, all through the heart right it's all your senses but it, they're mm -hmm. really emotional really they feel so deeply right yeah. kind of like my cat who's meowing in the background and i can't get her to stop and i'm sorry no the sexual is what we in america are raised to believe sex is mm. sex is sex it's naked bodies you give me a guy and a girl and you put them together and they you watch some porn and that sucks and you have to have an orgasm or it doesn't count, right? They're goal oriented. It is black, white, goal oriented. This is the body. Sex is the body, right? Bill yeah. Clinton didn't have sex, right? That wasn't real sex, right? It was the sexual definition. We didn't have sex, right? right? We got intimate, but that wasn't sex. Oh, and I didn't come. So it really didn't count, right? So Sexuals are very black and white. They're very mm -hmm. into their bodies. They can get turned on you. All you do is strip. They're naked. Oh, I'm ready. Yeah. Okay. So very black and white, very into the physical body. Kinky. Everybody mm -hmm. like freaks out when I use that word, right? Kinky <laughs> has this whole connotation of the kink world. But kinky really means you get turned on by things that are taboo, right? Mm. And maybe stuff in your household when you were growing up got yeah. you like you always wanted to break the rules mm -hmm. so if you grew up in a very strict household mm -hmm. breaking the rules could be sex before marriage mm. so all of a sudden you get married and sex isn't fun anymore yeah. you gotta start pushing the limits because mm. the things that turn you on is breaking the rules mm. perhaps it's sex not in the bedroom 
Mm. Okay, so it doesn't have to be the kink world. Perhaps it's playing with a plastic fork <laughs> and they like, whoops, they like scratching, like, or pinching. Yeah. Or like, let's slap your butt, right? Like, <laughs> is that sexual? I thought sexual is massage and soft touch and the kink, but like, no, let's try everything. Yeah. You know, you can slap me. As long as I know you love me, you can slap me. <laughs> when I say it's okay, right? Mm -hmm. They also like to play with roles, dominant, mm. submissive, right? Like I'm in control. No, you're in control. Mm -hmm. I want you to do this. No, I like, and they, they're really into creative fantasy mm. play and they can get stuck in their fantasy. That could be a problem, right? They yeah. get stuck in their fantasy and they can't really get excited unless they're in that mm -hmm. fantasy world. But again, they get pleasure in life and so many things that aren't sex, right? Mm -hmm. They're at work and they, you know, or I, I think about my son, right? I didn't send mm -hmm. him to one private school mm -hmm. because they had a very strict uniform policy. Mm -hmm. And I knew day one, my kid was going to break that uniform policy mm -hmm. rule and put in red shoelaces and get in trouble. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not sending him to this school <laughs> because he wants to push the limits. Yeah. He's always about doing something a little bit out there and seeing mm -hmm. if he can get in trouble. The first day of middle school, they said, don't hack. Here's your brand new computer. Don't hack it. What did he do that afternoon? He hacked into the site, right? Of course. So so he got so much pleasure out of that, mm -hmm. right? Now he was all, yeah, I hacked. Um, you know, He was willing to fess up and not get kicked yeah. out of school. It's just who gets lit up by bending the rules and yeah. going a little outside that the box, right? Mm -hmm. Children on a playground, We'll all play in the center of the playground if there's no fence around the playground. Ah, and the minute you put a fence around the playground, they'll start separating and play to the edges because ah. they know it's safe. So I'm going to get back to consent, right? Mm -hmm. So well, let me just flip the last blueprint, which is mm -hmm. the super fun, is the shapeshifter, right? Mm. So the shapeshifter can get pleasure mm. from all of the blueprint acts. Their, their nervous system get, get turned on yeah. with the sensual, with the sexual, with the kinky, with the energetic. They can play in all the blueprints. They're great lovers because mm -hmm. whatever lover they're with, they can adapt and still yeah. have pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. They're not closed off. But they need all of the different blueprints to feel fed. Uh, and if they're stuck playing in one playground, they're like, oh my God, I'm so bored. <laughs> Can, can we play yeah. another way? Like they need creativity, variety, mm -hmm. and they they want it all. They want yeah. life to be really big, really energetic, totally pleasurable all the time. Mm -hmm. They have an incredible capacity for pleasure. And so um, now, and thank you for that for that understanding of the different types, because this really sets the the groundwork for what we'll talk about in a moment is how this plays into the overall healthcare system. But before we right. do that, the understanding of consent, you did mention that and you said we talked yeah. about it, like, elaborate on that one a little bit. So please. consent is, especially in the sexual world, right? Mm -hmm. We're, we're crossing boundaries with human beings, right? Yes. And we got to have consent. Can I touch you this way, mm -hmm. right? So we have to come with care. Mm -hmm. We have to come with compassion. We have to come with curiosity. Mm -hmm. And we always have to ask consent because what I did yesterday, I did yesterday and today's a different yeah. day. And we could be married for 30 years, mm. but today I don't wanna play that way. Mm -hmm. Right. When you have, when you're five and you have a friend over, right. Everything I always learned, I learned in kindergarten. <laughs> I asked my friend over, do you want to play tag today? Yeah. No, I want to play on the swings. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, I don't want to play on the swings. Can we figure out something we both want to play together? Mm -hmm. And you have that conversation and you come with curiosity. What do you want to play today? What do I want to play today? Let's figure out how we're going to play together. And that's how five-year-olds have play dates mm. and they don't have power struggles. Yeah. I'm not telling you how I want to play and you have to play my way. Mm -hmm. Right. When you have a play date like that, your kid comes home and goes, I don't want to play. He's a bully. Mm -hmm. He always makes me play his way. Mm. Right. 
So we need to have consent conversations, even with the people that we live with 24 seven. Hey, I wanna tell you about my day to day. Are you okay to just listen and not give me advice? Wow. <laughs> right? That's a, that's a powerful don't try statement. And fix me. Yeah. Don't try and tell me how I should have done it different. Just listen to me. Mm -hmm. That's an empathic way to have consent. When you go to the dinner table at Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and you're, you have two aunts, your favorite aunt and your least favorite aunt, right? <laughs> yeah. And your least favorite aunt comes up and says, Hey, Adam, tell me all about your new job. Tell me about your podcast. I want to hear all about it. Get me like, sit down now. Tell me about it. I just like, want to eat some turkey. How'd you do it? And you're like, whoa, I just want like, I just want the appetizers and to chill. And can I have a glass of water first? You're like <laughs> all your energy barbs, all your armor, everything goes up. And do you really want to sit and chat with her? Mm -hmm. She violated all your energy boundaries. Mm-hmm. Now your, your favorite aunt comes with consent. Hey, Adam, I heard you're doing really well. Mm -hmm. When you have time today, can we go sit on the couch and you like, let me hear all about it whenever you're ready. Yeah. I'd love to know about your life. Mm -hmm. How does that sit? A little better, right? Oh yeah, definitely. That's consent. Hey, may I hear about your life? Mm -hmm. Not, hey, I got to hear about it. Right mm. now, if you're in the kinky submissive world, you might want someone to dom you. Hey, Adam, I need you to do this now. Right. <laughs> you, gotta have, you gotta know your audience and you gotta yeah. know who you're playing with. And, you know, so that again is usually with consent mm -hmm. in the kinky world. Like, hey, I'm gonna dom you today because you need me to dom you so that you yeah. get your work done. Right. But you ask consent first. Are you up for that? Not up for that. Yeah. Right? This is great. And so like this idea, so now up to this point, so we've kind of, or you've mapped out the blueprints, what they mean. Also the idea of consent and what that can look like and why that can be healthy. So now obviously like, so how does this relate to, and where do you see this connection in, yeah. in the healthcare in the, system? Yeah, how, does what it, is the, how does it at all relate the, to the potential, healthcare system? The potential. Makes no like, sense, right? Except the light bulb went off for me. Yeah. Western medicine is the sexual blueprint. Wow. It's all the freaking body. Mm -hmm. We don't listen to the heart. We barely yeah. give lip service to mind body mm -hmm. and the energy body. Like, whoa, what does that have to do with anything? Right. Yeah. And what I realized when I started to dig deeper, mm -hmm. the Western medical system was an offshoot really of the anatomists you know, mm. way back when that started yeah. dissecting bodies yes. and started, oh, here's the heart. There's four chambers. Here are the mm -hmm. kidneys and the circulatory system connects X, mm -hmm. A to B and the here of the bone. And they were dissecting dead bodies. Yeah. There was no energy in dead bodies. Mm -hmm. Live bodies have energy. Mm. Acupuncture 3,000, 5,000 years ago understood and said, hey, your, your foot's connected to your kidney and the, yeah. you know, your reproductive organs are part of the, the, the I don't know all the meridians, yeah. right? But the, the energy is flowing and everything's connected to everything else, right? Mm -hmm. They studied a system. They studied yeah. live human beings. They were in tune with the earth mm -hmm. and the sky. We humans exist. We are the universe and we're part of the universe. Mm -hmm. We exist in our environment. We know now in science, your zip code is as crucial to your health, if not more so than your DNA. Wow. Okay. It is, right? We are part of the environment we live in. Mm -hmm. For every experience in life, we have a mm -hmm. thought, we have an image, mm -hmm. we have an emotion, and we have a body sensation. Mm -hmm. Thought, mind, body, mm -hmm. image. Sight, sound, it's, it's the energy coming yeah. in. Heart, it's the emotion. How do we feel about what we just took in? Mm -hmm. And then we have a physical sensation in our bodies. Mm -hmm. You go to the doctor and they're like, all right, what hurts? Let me give you a diagnosis. They don't take you in totality of mm -hmm. who you are. They don't ask the context of how you got yeah. to where you are today. So functional medicine is trying to take Western medicine and make it systemic the way acupuncture is. Yeah. 
And it's what happened to you. Let me look at the timeline of your life. And almost always six months to a year, maybe two to three years after mm -hmm. a critical event in your social life, if you will, yeah. you get sick physically. So what I realized is number one, Western, in, in the 1800s in this country, mm -hmm. we had acupuncturists, we had herbalists, we had naturopaths, we had osteopaths, we had allopaths, we had chiropractors, yeah. we had massage. We, we had all different healers, mm -hmm. but in 1911 or 1918, there was this Flexner report. One might white male educator guy went around to all the schools of training yeah. and came back and said, the only one that makes sense is the MD system. Wow. So we're going to make the MD system, the certifiable only government accepted healing modality in this country. Wow. He was a sexual. Yeah. He only stood the, understood the body. Yeah. He went to the medical schools that taught about the body and he's like, oh, I get it. Okay. He went to acupuncture. He's like, where's your scientific research? So like, oh, we have 5,000 years of, <laughs> of data. I don't want to yeah. look at that. You know, it doesn't make sense. Oh, and by the way, you're Chinese and I'm American mm. and I don't really get it because you don't look like me. And, and mind you, the folks who are, there are the sexual blueprint. I think history has historically made certain people resonate with the sexual body and dissociate mm. from their heart body and their emotional body because a subset of our population mm -hmm. has had power over other people yeah if you will yeah and they inflicted trauma on other human beings mm. and if you're inflicting trauma on another human being mm -hmm. it's gotta hurt energetically and emotionally it can't not you're human yeah but you still want to be a loving human being mm -hmm. so you have to dissociate a part of your body mm -hmm. you dissociate your energetic and your emotional body because mm -hmm. you want to go home at night and be loving to your family yeah but you just the king just said off with their head <laughs> yeah right yeah so they have to actually somehow separate and so the sexual blueprint historically mm -hmm. may be more associated with those in the power mm. because they, they had to dissociate for safety for their own. So that's their personal trauma. Yeah. So it's cognitive dissonance, mm -hmm. right? I'm being mean to somebody, but I know I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to cut off that part of my body and not feel the trauma that I just mm. inflicted on another human being. Mm. So I can't be as empathic because I, I have to be strong. Yeah. And how many men are cut off because they're told to, you can't be emotional. You got to be strong. Right. But we're all emotional beings. We're human. Mm -hmm. We're all energetic beings because every, when they do experiments on photons, no, not photons or energy, protons, yeah. the smallest piece of matter which matter is physical right mm -hmm. they put protons through these slit like experiments it's all science you can look it up on youtube it's mm -hmm. einstein's theory and protons show up as energy not as matter right so at the end of the day we are all energy mm -hmm. we're just such a slow wavelength or frequency i don't remember which the scientists can tell me that we perceive each other as physical beings. So Dr. Tina, and this is, this is fascinating to me because I see this melding really, as, as you mentioned, of like Eastern, Western, other types of medicine, and really the evolution of how we got here to this current medical system. And so now, now, you know, you obviously have proposed these blueprints and the idea that to me, even just the knowledge of knowing it allows somebody yeah. to have some ability to self-reflect on where they fall. It's almost like, I don't know if I'd say, I would say it one-to-one, -one, but like, it's my, it's like Myers-Briggs in the workplace, maybe. Oh, no, so. it is. It's to say it's Myers-Briggs. It's the Enneagram. It's all mm -hmm. that. So I think number one, if you know who you are, yeah. you know how you to communicate to another human being. Mm. and how you you know your limitations and your strengths mm -hmm. if you can walk in a room and i walk in a room now and i listen to how people talk to me mm -hmm. and how their body language is and i go yeah oh they're an energetic oh they're essential they're this yeah. they're that and all of a sudden i can relate in a different way mm -hmm. and i can open up and 
an energy. So imagine you're an energetic. This is the way I mm -hmm. described it to friends. You're an energetic and you woke up one morning and you have appendicitis. Yeah. Okay. So you're in intense pain. Your body's hurting and you know <laughs> something is wrong, right? Right. Now, so many energetics, and I've talked to a bunch lately, like mm -hmm. they don't like the Western medical system. They they, mm. they don't even know why, mm. but they're they're like turned off. They're the ones who go to the acupuncturist and the mm -hmm. massages. But one day you wake up and you got a freaking appendicitis and you're like dying and you know you're dying. So you go yeah. to the ER and you go into the ER and all of a sudden you got 104 fever. Why? Because you waited forever to go to the freaking doctor. Right. <laughs> So your appendix probably ruptured. You're got 104 fever. You're almost delirious. They're, the nurses are at you. The, they're, they're taking vitals. They're putting an IV. They're maybe yeah. they're tra getting ready to transfuse you. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't appendicitis. Maybe you were bleeding. Who knows? Yeah. Everybody in the ER is like running at you to save your life. Mm -hmm. They're doing their job. They are saving your life. They rush yeah. you to the OR. They open you up. They take out your appendix. Nowadays, it's through the laparoscope, right? You're in the recovery room and the doctor comes over and goes, oh, you had appendicitis. We took mm -hmm. it out. You're fine. You'll go home later today. You're all better. Yeah. And the energetic is like, better? Yeah, the pain's gone, but I don't feel better. I feel like a Mack truck just hit me. Wow. Because their energy body, mm -hmm. these are people who need to take things slowly. Yeah. And they need really, they consent. It can take them months. Mm -hmm. I tell a woman she needs surgery. Like she's got an ovarian cyst and I should take it out. Oh my God, doctor. I got to think on that. Like, really? Yeah. Am I dying? Because I don't really want surgery. They, they need time to mm. digest and take it in. And everyone just descended on this person in the ER, in yeah. the operating room. Their energy body was totally violated. Mm. And they need healing from that. Yeah. We fixed their physical body. We had no idea we traumatized their energetic body in the process of keeping them alive. Wow. Right. I mean, I talk about that all the time with antibiotics and probiotics, right? Mm -hmm. Antibiotics screw people up. Every round of antibiotics, 10% mm -hmm. incidence of, of anxiety. Mm. We changed the physical body. We changed the bacteria in our body. We got rid of all our healthy bacteria while we got rid of the ones that were trying to kill us mm -hmm. now you're alive you didn't die of strep strep throat and that's right. good a lot of people died of strep throat and had rheumatic heart disease and all that wow. so antibiotics aren't bad mm -hmm. but they have nuclear fallout mm. that we need to heal and now that we know about the microbiome we're like oh everything is polarities we heard yeah. this we fix this and life is polarities, good mm -hmm. and bad, yin and yang. There's black yang in the white yin, or it's the yeah. way around, and white yang in the black yin. The whole is both. Mm -hmm. A sensual. Okay, take a sensual. All right, we want to make you better. So we're putting you in the hospital for a week in that white, sterile room with no windows. You can't see the outside. We're going to give you antibiotics because you're, and you're, you have that scratchy, hospital blanket and hospital sheet, like the army blanket and the really crappy sheet and there's no music yeah. it's really crappy tv that don't even have cable mm -hmm. you know and every four hours during the night they're going to wake you up and mm -hmm. oh it's covid so you can't bring anything into the in the room with you that yeah you, like you're not allowed your teddy bear you're not allowed your comfy they're done like we know now mm -hmm. just by putting a window in a hospital room where they can look outside at the trees, mm -hmm. they're out of the hospital one day faster. Wow. Okay. Connection. You're alone in a hospital room. Is that how people heal? No. No, they need people to love on them and give them mm -hmm. neurons and give them energy, mm -hmm. especially the energetics and the sensuals. Mm. We're cutting them off from their family yeah, and telling them to heal. They need to potentially have IV antibiotics at home in the setting, mm -hmm. right, of love. And one of our cancer setting uh, mm -hmm. centers here, it's great. You get a badge and they, they, you choose the scene on the wall, the temperature of the room and the music that is played when you go into your room. Wow. 
So all you have to do is walk into the room and it's the environment is set to you, what you yeah. chose that would be healing for you. Mm -hmm. Why do we wait till people have cancer to do that? Yeah. Why do we wait to have these integrative centers mm -hmm. with cancer? But why aren't we doing that? When you walk in the hospital, you're welcomed. Maybe there's music playing in every room. For there's sure. a meditation teacher teaching you and we're walking with you, mm -hmm. right? Now imagine also you're kinky mm -hmm. and you live, you're a CEO and you live in that dominant role, Yeah. right? Maybe in your bedroom, you're a submissive because mm -hmm. you want to play with the different roles, mm -hmm. but you do not want to give up your power when you go to the physician. Yeah. And what did that physician just do? Strip, get undressed. Yeah. I'm touching you here, there, and everywhere else. And mm -hmm. I didn't even ask permission before I touched you. Mm. Before I made you get undressed and feel naked. Mm -hmm. And I made you feel small because every time you asked me a question, I didn't listen. I interrupted. Ah. I just stripped you of all your power. Yeah. How is that healing for people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't seem like it would be. And it seems like, and as you give these examples, it becomes crystal clear how this type of teaching can really progress and be, and be implemented in, in different practices to help people heal, which is the goal. I mean, that's the goal. We talk, we use this and, word healthcare yeah. system, but what is the goal of the healthcare system to help people heal? Right. And the irony is, the definition of doctor means teacher. Mm. The body heals. The human doctor facilitates healing. Mm. We are not God. Yeah. We don't actually heal. Years and years ago, my first year of my fellowship, I remember I was trained in microscopic surgery to repair fallopian tubes so people mm. could get pregnant after having their tubes tied. Mm. My first surgery, the first one I did, you know, I'm operating with this teeny tiny 8-0 <laughs> microscopic suture under the microscope, you know, mm. it took four hours. It took forever, wow. you know, and I'm trying to learn how to do it. Oh, I felt like I totally botched the job. It was like, you know, I'm, wow. I was brand new and I'm learning how to do it. Right. She gets pregnant, mm. right. She's pregnant within six months. Amazing. You know, six months into my fellowship, I'm doing it. Boom, boom, bam, bam. I know how to do it. I'm, I'm feeling really good. My skills are down. I did the case. And it was like super easy. No scar tissue. Blah, blah. We did a test later. Her tubes were completely blocked. Wow. She, the, the patient actually, actually has to do the healing. Mm. I put the stitches together. Mm -hmm. Her body decides whether they work and they keep it open or it scars closed. Wow. I'm the facilitator. Mm. right when you do a car cardiac catheterization you know balloon open someone's heart you give them blood flow while you're in the in the room mm -hmm. stay open or closed yeah are they going to eat cheesecake or not <laughs> like my <laughs> father you know his heart was cracked open he had stents and mm. it, he never changed what he ate he's like <laughs> no this gives me pleasure i like cheesecake and hamburgers and the hell with it right and he, he had heart disease and he lived to be 89 anyway. So wow. good for him. But, mm -hmm. but again, it's, it's, you know, there are people who gallstones dissolve, right. Mm -hmm. With some herbs and a change in diet. Mm -hmm. I've had women where cysts that they had somehow disappeared and like, they weren't functional cysts. They were cysts that were like endometriosis cysts. And yeah, wow. I gave them some medicine. I have a woman who had breast cancer, mm -hmm. like stage two breast cancer, but mm. so she was willing to get chemo, but absolutely refused surgery because her mom had had a complication from surgery. And she mm. was like, uh, uh, my mom died. I'm not doing it. Wow. Stage two, she's still alive and kicking, doing great. Amazing. And other people with stage one and it comes back. Why? Mm. Right. So we, as doctors, can facilitate healing and mind mm -hmm. you scientists keep keep going keep getting stronger and stronger i'm not denigrating western medicine when mm -hmm. I, I still do in vitro fertilization for those folks who need it but i also look at it mm -hmm. you know 20 somethings 30 somethings should be mm -hmm. fertile in vitro was designed for people who party hardy mm -hmm. and uh oh i got a disease and my tubes got blocked Oops. Wow. 
maybe I got chlamydia, maybe I got gonorrhea, yeah. maybe I had endometriosis and my tubes were blocked and our surgery wasn't working for them. Mm. So brilliant doc said, hey, hey, if we take the eggs and the sperm, we put them in a put them in the Petri dish and then put them back in your uterus, everything's working but the tubes. Yeah. So in vitro, wow, what an amazing experiment, a total disruption mm -hmm. of the paradigm. It was great. Yeah. But now we use it for everyone. Instead of going, hey, you're 30, you should be healthy and be able to get pregnant. Yeah. Let's figure out why you're not getting pregnant. And mm. you should be able to have sex and get pregnant. Like, yeah. why? Why is your sperm count low? Why don't you ovulate? How can I get you healthier mm. so you can ovulate? How can mm. I get the guy healthier so he's got better sperm? Yeah. How can I get you to communicate better so you have more sex? Mm -hmm. Right? So in my field, it's, yeah, we got IVF and it's great. Mm -hmm. But shouldn't we humans be able to get pregnant? old-fashioned way <laughs> right are we breeding extinction mm. we should be standing as doctors and saying hey what's up with the food system we're poisoning mm. our population what's up with roundup that causes cancer and yeah. autoimmune diseases we're killing humans we're making yeah. them infer we should be the doctors should be the ones going i don't care that we have drugs to treat crohn's disease yeah. and ulcerative colitis. I don't want my son getting Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. Right. Why are we putting chemicals in our earth and in our water and making people sick? Sorry, mm -hmm. I just droned on and on, but I'm kind no, of passionate no, about no. this stuff. No, 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 I, I, um, I love it. And, it. and it needs to be said is the thing. So I, I, I more medical professionals as they kind of, as when they see this, when obviously the, you know, patients see this, um, and just the general public, I mean, that's the idea here is to hear that, here's some other ideas, some other, um, some other insight that maybe we don't get every day. So the, and, and just how you started the interview talking about, you know, IVF factory and people thinking like, that's the only way or the only thing to consider. Like, um, sometimes some of this information comes out, but it's not usually from your doctor in the case. So considering well, your exactly. background, how long you've been in practice, um, like how many women you've helped, how many um, couples you've helped and people you've helped um, and just your passion for it. I mean, coming from you, it's just, it's just a little bit different. And then adding in neurotic blueprints and kind of how that fits into it and thinking about like what, how you can reframe your thinking and, and how you look at health. I mean, this is all intertwined. I see from your, from your practice yeah, and otherwise. It's we, we really have four bodies, a mind body, a heart body, an energy body, and a physical body. And the way to wellness is when they all meet and they yeah. all stand on thing. And like, you know, for years I used to word mind, body, spirit. And I'll be mm -hmm. honest, I went I, in my integrative fellowship. I went up, like I'm the volunteer. I'll go up to the front of the room with the acupuncturist to be her, you know, dummy to do. And she's like, stick out your tongue. Right. That's what acupuncturists do. Yeah. Right. She's like, Oh, you lost your chi. And I was like, what? And I mm -hmm. really, I lost my chi. Mm -hmm. I was so busy running, doing yeah. that. I lost my passion for living. I lost mm. my soul. Mm. I lost so much of who I was. Mm -hmm. And she saw that in me in 30 mm -hmm. seconds. Wow. And then it took me years to figure out what is she like, <laughs> hmm, how do I get it back? But I think she's right, you know? And yeah. this was the journey that led me back to who I really am at my core. Mm -hmm. And integrative medicine was like, oh, I get it now. Yeah. We need all the healers at the table mm -hmm. because maybe it's your energy body that's actually been traumatized. Yeah. Right. And maybe you were traumatized as a child and you dissociated. Mm -hmm. And you're living in a dissociative hypo arousal life and you need mm -hmm. to come back. Your nervous system needs to actually reboot. Yeah. Maybe you're living, how many of us during COVID have been living hyper aroused in that anxiety? Mm -hmm. Like we are just, you know, <laughs> like, when is it going to be over? I need my friends. Yeah. I need to go party, right? How do we get our nervous <laughs> system back on 
track, right? Who gets sick from COVID and who mm-hmm. just has a cold? It's how healthy their immune system is. Yeah. Well, how healthy is their immune system depends on how they're eating. Are they living in a hyper aroused out of the window of tolerance state and then they're insulin resistant and they're and they're oxidative all their antioxidants are used up mm-hmm. because they're so busy just trying to like stay alive right they're not they're outside the window of tolerance so we need all the healers at the same table we don't we live in an interconnected web of life like you do business mm. i do health i'm not going to be a biz i'm not a good businesswoman right <laughs> i run my practice but that's not my forte right i'm a healer mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you're no better or worse than me you're just different yeah and an acupuncturist is no better or worse than a physician they're just mm. different yeah and a therapist or a body therapist or a sex body therapist there are mm-hmm. body therapists that actually help you heal through sex touch or sexology mm. work mm. because so many of us have been traumatized one out of mm. four women one out of six men mm. were traumatized as kids mm. or our root chakra we didn't have food security we didn't have home security right i tell them they come to my office you need to eat your fruits and vegetables and go exercise and they live in a gang infested neighborhood with no supermarkets yeah Really? Mm. McDonald's hamburgers should really be $20 because of all the disease they cause later. Mm. Grass-fed beef should be cheap. Yeah. Organic vegetables should be affordable. We should have community farms in every neighborhood Mm. so that everybody can grow food. We got to go back to the earth. Anyway. Love it. Dr. Tina, as always, our conversations, I mean, they just get better and better. I learn something new every time I talk to you and I look forward to having you back on the show for some more. But that being said, uh, if somebody's listening to this right now and they want to learn more about the erotic blueprints or they want to also learn more about the West Coast Women's Reproductive Center, I mean, what's the best way for people to follow up and to connect? Well, to meet me, right, you can go to womensreproduction.com or Facebook's Women Reproduction or Instagram Women Reproduction. Next Sunday, um, well, this probably will post later, but Mm -hmm. the Core Erotic Blueprints on October 21st is coming out on Goop this season, which I didn't even know about when I set this up. And so I think it'll become more like Myers-Briggs and people will know Mm -hmm. about it. I do workshops. I do workshops and coaching. I do free ones. I do minimal cost ones. I do private coaching, Mm -hmm. but you usually can access all of that. If you go to my website, womensreproduction.com or to Facebook at women's reproduction. Fantastic. Well, Dr. Tina, as always, it's a pleasure talking to you today and uh, to the audience as always appreciate you tuning in. Uh, If you're a first time listener or visitor, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to come back. We have many more mission based uh, entrepreneurs, experts and executives coming on and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Dr. Tina, as always, it's been awesome. What kind of uh, blueprint kiss do you want to say goodbye? Oh, um, an energetic, I'll take it, <laughs> a sensual, a little kinky, all of them. I think you said the last one. I want all of them I'm hybrid. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> awesome.